<laughs> Hi, this is Juliet, and I wanted to make a, a video of uh, what instrument I, I play, and I do study this in college. Um, I get questions like, oh, are you, uh, what, what, uh, a major are you in? I'm like, oh, I'm in music. And they say, oh, do you record? And I say, yeah, well, I have recorded before. And um, they say, oh, uh, are you like in a rock band or something? I'm like, no, uh, I play oboe. Once I say that, they're like, oh, yeah, the, the one that looks like this? And I'm, I just, um, I say no, because that's not even a wind instrument, number one. And, uh, that's a violin. <laughs> and, uh, there's another one who's like, oh, it's, it's the one that, it's like this, this one, right? And I say, uh, no, that's, that's not the one I play, that's a flute. And you don't hold a flute like this, you hold, you hold it opposite hands, and that's a flute, and they, I say, oh, it's, it's more like clarinet-ish, and they're like, oh, you know, the, the one like this, and it's, it's the big one that looks like a bomb, and I'm just like, no, that's not it, <laughs> that's not a oboe, um, that is a bassoon, Kind of same family, but you're, you're getting there. You're getting there. Um, so I just say it's more of like a mix between a flute and clarinet because people know what a clarinet is and people know what a flute is. So I don't know. They don't. It doesn't matter really to them. It doesn't really matter. But um, that's for people who I guess doesn't know what a oboe is. So um, I wanted to make a video to show you what I play. I play an oboe. <laughs> it's a double reed instrument and the double reed family, closely related to an English horn, if anything, if that's, that's closest. Um, oh, I play a uh, lore, this is the case, it's a lore, and um, it's, it's falling apart basically, I need to get a new uh, instrument case, but um, you open it on the sides, like right here, and um, this is how it looks like in the inside. It's a roll of purple. It's from France. Um, it's a. It's not a professional AK. It's just the you know regular Lore of Paris. Um, it's. I think it is from 1993-ish. Um, it's not too old. And when I got it, it was really easy. Like it's really uh, resistant. But, you know, since uh, I've had it, I've broken it in, um, so it's a lot easier. It's not as, and it doesn't have any cracks, which is really awesome because wood does crack and, um, you know, can't really do anything about that, but pin, put pins inside them to hold the cracks from de completely destroying the instrument itself. So, um, this is the top joint top joint and it has <laughs> these little buttons and this is or not buttons but keys and this is the um, octave key this is for first octave second octave you've used both of these for a second octave and this is a third octave you don't really use them um, the person who fixed my oboe <laughs> cover first uh, handled with my oboe, um, screwed it down, I don't really need it, unless I'm playing a, like, a B flat above the staff, like, an octave before, after that, so, is that a B7, I don't know, B6, I don't, I don't know, um, that's, a, I think that's a B6, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, um, that's that's where we go. That's how your fingers lay. This one, this one, this one, and this one. And you see this first key right here. That's a uh, half hole. Um, whenever I want to play like a C sharp or D, 
I roll my finger down so it creates half a hole is letting the air out and I roll my finger down to this little um, extension right here and um, this is the bottom joint um, your fingers go right here and you want to cover all these holes when I first played oboe these holes were literally just as big as like the outside rim like barely like that small like like covering the key so I had to put down all my fingers on to cover the hole and I feel like so spoiled because like I needed to cover that you see that that one that one doesn't even have a hole this one look how tiny that hole you have to cover with your finger this one's not even that bad like look at that that's the biggest I have to do um, if you see closely like the outer rim there's like two rims like imagine putting like you have to make sure all your finger covers that like I only when I first started playing I had this really bad student like plastic oboe um, and it, I had a cover to that like just that inch that inch really makes a difference because if you don't cover it like the note won't come out uh, so that was I'm so happy I feel spoiled or that was just a bad instrument. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I don't. Um, this is the place where you put your thumb, and this little loop on top is optional if you want to put a neck strap. I used to wear a neck strap, but because my hand started hurting right here in my thumb-ish area, but um, I slowly weaned myself off like this year. I, I, did, I only used it for like three years because I don't know why I did, but I did. And uh, the way you um, put the oboe together is you want to have your hand not on the keys because you could ruin the springs or the screws that are inside the, the joint. So you kind of gently place them together and slowly just like twist it in oh. and you want you see how this is off right now you want these to line up and you don't want any spaces in between see that it's like basically it looks like one solid like instrument together that's what it is and um, here's the bell this is the bell, and um, unlike a clarinet, a clarinet could just stick the bell in the bottom joint, but an oboe, you need to come, see how the bottom has another, like, connection, like as it was on the side right here, you want to gently twist it until it is lined up. You see how it's not lined up yet? And then you want to line it up so it looks like one whole instrument. And this is how big it is. Um, and I want to show you what um, this, this is where you put your reeds and this is how you hold it. And um, these are all like um, how you add flats and sharp, how you flat the note, because it has uh, it releases certain um, like openings when you press it down or you let it out. Like it makes an, uh, the note sound flat or sharp, um, not in a bad way, but when it caught like in the key of something um, you could pause that to do that and um, I want to show you the reeds I, um, I have to stick in here um, it's my reed case and um, I like I like using this reed it's really well made see the symmetric in that and um, you can see the heart tip and back. When I say heart tip and back, like you see the lightest part right here, 
right there. That's the tip. And this is the back, like, up. see how that, like, I'm rubbing my finger right there. And then right in the middle, if you could, can't see it too well, like, right in the middle, you see this line right here? That is a spine. That's how you divide the three into two halves. Um, that's a spine. And the heart is located right between the tip and the back, so it's right here right here and it's the heaviest part it controls um kind of like how a boat steers a ship like the lighter it is you know how flat and sharp that is um this is the best read i have right now i know i say i have no reads <laughs> look at all these reads this is the best one and all reads are different because you have to scrape it because it's it just takes forever to make one good read like honestly like I spent like two weeks on this like it's terrible and you could tell like the way it sounds the way it sounds like it, it sounds like an oboe <laughs> it makes the oboe sound like an oboe <laughs> not like a dying duck you know what I mean yeah, I'll explain that. But uh, here is a read that I'm working on right now. Um, see that? It's really thick. There's no, not really, like you can see the back and spine, but it needs to be taken off a lot more up here and the tip, and it's not even clipped yet. See that? It's not even clipped yet. I need to start doing um, my next one. Um, and it's very essential with having when instruments is having a swab and this is a silk swab it's my spit rag swab whatever um just kind of like see the metal part it kind of uses as weight to like put through the instrument and you um just let it drop Through for wants to drop through and one okay there and um, it comes out the other end. Doop. See that? Comes right through and it just kind of takes all the spit out. It's not condensation. It's spit. It's disgusting. <laughs> Wanted to get that out because it's gonna go in your keys and cause this like disgusting like spitty or rattle and disgusting uh, you know the stuff that when when a wind player or trumpets or brass players like they like let out their spit valve or whatever right that's spit like it's not condensation it's, yeah so this is more just collects it and just kind of soaks it up and then just instead of um, goes on the ground. Sometimes when I, when I'm resting between, uh, measures or songs, like, I put it on my, leg, leg, and, like, pees on my leg, like, not pees, but the spit, like, <laughs> goes down and, like, <laughs> makes spots on my, like, jeans or something, so, I don't know, just a fact, just a little fact tidbit. You probably didn't, don't even care. Um, also, what I carry with me in my case is my knives for scraping my reeds. You know how I was saying that I, I work on my reeds? I make my own reeds. I've been doing this for four, five, six, seven, seven years already. And um, I have two. One's a double hollow beveled. You can tell by this. It's just a single bevel, I don't know, RDG, <laughs> there you go, um, but this one is by, um, I forgot, I'll put some kind of link for these down there, if you even want to look at it, I don't know, um, I do, these are also essentials, there's a cutting block, how awesome and big this cutting block is. It's been, it's been used a lot. My razor blade. Yes, I have razor blades in my bag with me because 
I play with razor blades. Deal with it. And I have um, my ruler so I can measure how long my um, my reads should be. It's at, it's at 73. I like my teachers because it has the gauge on it. Like, it has the gauge for the oboe and it has exactly only 73. I really want that ruler, but this was really cheap. It was like $5, so. RDG, you know. Hey. And, um, what else? Um, I wanna sh I'm working on a Barrett right now. It's a methods book. Standard methods book. And I have, like, some weird obsession when I make reads like I need to have all the thread like all the different color thread that's what like kind of the only fun thing of making reads because it's it's so hard to like it's not so hard I just like having different color reads like what other instrument has different color mouthpieces like honestly like trumpet mouthpieces are brass and they're either gold plated or silver or like you know that's the only thing with every other instrument you can only make it gold and silver well the cool thing about oboe is you could change the the thread on the reeds like this like look at that that's so that's fun yeah and um, I have like I'll probably make a video or something like that if you want to trade thread or something because that's what oboe plays do that's weird I know but I'm set for life with all this thread like what am I gonna do with it <laughs> like, make a billion reads I don't know um, <laughs> I don't know and if you want um, a read case like this which is really awesome I only sell them for fifteen and um, they're light, they're thin, you can see your reads, just, um, I'll probably put my email, uh, down below if you want to buy a, a read case for me, it's cheap, I mean, you could hold, uh, I think seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yeah, you could hold seven reads in one case, and it has a window so you know what reads you have in here, which is... <laughs> Awesome. Like, where are you going to find a tin reed case that is very durable? And this has lasted me for like three years or more. And I make it myself. I really didn't have time to wholesale it because I'm in college. But, um, just saying, if you want one, the link is going to be down there. And, um, that's basically.